This video is briefly going to go over the different levels of protein structure. So we have the primary structure, which is formed by linking separate amino acids together in their sequence. Then we have secondary protein structure, which is formed by hydrogen bonds of the backbone residues of the amino acids. Then we have tertiary, which is global folding of the protein, and that's formed by various interactions of the amino acid side chains. And then quaternary protein structure is when two different proteins come together and they uh, bond together, but they're not covalently bound together at all. Now primary structure is just when multiple amino acids link together. And if you need a little bit more work, uh, practice identifying different amino acid residues, see um, one of my other videos from chapter three. But here we can see we have an amine group, alpha carbon carbonyl, that's one amino acid, and that's linked by this peptide bond right here to the next amino acid, which is serine amine, alpha carbon carbonyl with the serine side chain, and so forth. So the primary structure basically is just the sequence that these amino, amino acids are linked together. And these are held together by those covalent peptide bonds. And that's why the primary structure in the absence of actual chemical reactions, the protein primary structure will actually not go away. Those peptide bonds are covalent bonds, very strong. They do not cleave easily. Thus, in denaturation, even though the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures may be lost in a protein, the primary structure will remain. The secondary structure, then, is the first level of folding of this protein. And the key things to remember about secondary structure is that these are hydrogen bonds between the amino acid backbone residues. So remember, the amino acid backbone is the amine alpha carbon carbonyl. And so we can have either an alpha helix, as shown here on the top, or we can have beta sheets. And each of these is formed by hydrogen bonding between the oxygen of the carbonyl group of the backbone of one amino acid and the uh, amine group, hydrogen, of another one. So you can see here this oxygen would have a negative dipole. This hydrogen would have a positive dipole. There's hydrogen bonds, but it's between the backbone residues. Same here with the beta sheet. So we have the carbonyl group and the amine group of a separate amino acid and these form hydrogen bonds together. So again, the th key things about secondary structure is they're relatively local. They're between different amino acid residues and their hydrogen bonds between the backbone parts of the amino acid residues. Tertiary structure then is when all of these local foldings start to fold globally. So this is where amino acids that are very far apart in the, in the chain, amino acid 10 might interact with amino acid 430 because of global folding. And so that global folding, the key things to remember about the tertiary structure is these are formed by interactions of the amino acid side chains. Secondary was the backbone, tertiary is the amino acid side chains. And there are five types of uh, interactions that the side chains can make. They can make hydrogen bonds, they can do hydrophobic interactions, they can make ionic bonds, they can do van der Waals interactions, and they can do disulfide bridges. So we'll talk a little bit more about those in the next video. Quaternary structure then is when two completely separate proteins come together. And again, the amino acid side chains are going to make interactions from one protein to another. And those interactions, the hydrogen bonds, the van der Waals interactions, the nonpolar hydrophobic interactions, and the disulfide bridges, those hold two separate proteins together. So tertiary and quaternary are very similar, but tertiary is folding within one protein, and quaternary is uh, interactions between two different proteins or more. Sometimes you can have several proteins that inter interact together for quaternary structure.